Have you ever mentioned that your favorite dinosaur was Brontosaurus, only to have some dino nerd tell you that Brontosaurus doesn't exist? If you're like most people, this probably made you a little annoyed, then confused, and then you probably stopped thinking about it and went about your day. But if you're wondering what all the confusion is about, allow me to explain with some confusing history and science. First of all, the confusion isn't about whether this animal actually existed or not, it's just about what it's called. It's like when scientists decided that instead of calling Pluto a planet, we're going to call it a dwarf planet from now on. Nothing changed about the rock out there in a distant orbit around the sun, the only thing that changed is how we humans talk about it. Some people seem to think that the confusion about Brontosaurus has something to do with the famous case of the dinosaur that was reconstructed with its neck and tail switched. This did actually happen, but it wasn't a dinosaur, it was a Lasmosaurus. It doesn't have much to do with the Brontosaurus issue, except that it did start the rivalry between Edward Drinker Cope, the paleontologist who made this error, and Othniel Charles Marsh, the paleontologist who shamed him for it as often and as publicly as he could. This rivalry, known as the Bone Wars, took place in the late 1800s. Cope and Marsh advanced scientific understanding of the prehistoric natural world using tools of the trade, ego, wealth, and deception. This set the stage for what was going on in the paleontology field at the time, but this is mostly a Marsh story. In 1877, a local miner from Morrison, Colorado, found some sauropod fossils which were sent to Marsh, the best specimen of which Marsh named Apatosaurus ajax. Two years later, in 1879, Marsh discovered and named a different sauropod, Brontosaurus excelsus. Apatosaurus and Brontosaurus were clearly closely related, but seemed different enough to warrant belonging to separate genera. That is, until 1903, when paleontologist Elmer Riggs, known for discovering Brachiosaurus, published a study which argued that the Apatosaurus specimen that Marsh had originally named was apparently an immature individual, and that Apatosaurus and Brontosaurus were the same genus. The paper read, and I quote, the proportionate size of the two specimens, the shorter shaft and narrow distal end of the scapula, the outline of the coracoid, the open chevrons, the form of the anterior thoracic and cervical vertebrae, and the structure of the pelvis all display such similarity as one would expect in a young animal of the brontosaur type. In fact, upon the one occasion in which Professor Marsh compared these two genera, he mentioned the similarity between the scapulae of their respective types. In view of these facts, the two genera may be regarded as synonymous. As the term Apatosaurus has priority, Brontosaurus will be regarded as a synonym. End quote. The International Code of Zoological Nomenclature, or ICZN, is the accepted set of rules on how to name animals according to science. Among these rules is the principle of priority, which states that the first published name takes precedence. In this case, Apatosaurus, since it was named in 1877, and Brontosaurus was named in 1879. They were still different enough to be separate species, however, so Brontosaurus excelsus became Apatosaurus excelsus. There was no longer a dinosaur scientifically named Brontosaurus, and this was the way it would be for over a hundred years. So, then why did people still call it Brontosaurus? Well, it has to do with the chaos caused in the aforementioned Bone Wars. Many major institutions and museums at the time were caught up in all the excitement and wanted to get the biggest and most impressive fossil mounts up on display as fast as they could. And in 1905, the American Museum of Natural History unveiled the first sauropod skeleton ever seen by the public eye. This mount was mostly put together from what is thought to be an apatosaurus, with the feet of a similar sauropod found nearby and a tail with too few vertebrae. Most notably, it had a Camarasaurus skull, as the macronarian provided the best-known sauropod skull material at the time. You can't really blame paleontologists for working with whatever incomplete fossils they have at any point in history, but you can blame the American Museum of Natural History, and specifically Henry Fairfield Osborne, an opponent of Marsh's, for naming this monstrosity Brontosaurus in 1905, after Riggs' study had officially retired the name two years prior. So, like the venom-spitting Dilophosaurus, popular culture proved to be more popular than the official scientific literature and the name Brontosaurus stuck in the public mind. That's why Brontosaurus went on to be one of the most famous and well-known dinosaurs, while dino nerds insisted there was no creature by that name. But the story's not over yet. In 1909, the first Apatosaurus skull was finally discovered, and a third species was named within the genus, Apatosaurus louisae. 
This skull was much more gracile than previously known macronarian sauropods like Camarasaurus, and it was around this time that they realized Apatosaurus was more closely related to Diplodocus. However, thanks to ongoing museum drama, sculpted skulls based on Camarasaurus and Brachiosaurus continued to be used on many skeleton mounts. It wasn't until the 1970s that Apatosaurus and Diplodocus skulls were more formally described, and finally, in 1979, an Apatosaurus skull was correctly mounted on an Apatosaurus skeleton. Paleontologists generally agreed that the dinosaur formerly known as Brontosaurus was a species of Apatosaurus throughout the 20th century and its official name remained Apatosaurus excelsus. One notable exception was Robert T. Backer in the 1990s who argued that they were different enough for Brontosaurus to be a separate genus. Then, in 2015, Emmanuel Chopp led a detailed study reevaluating taxonomic placement of all the species within Diplodocidae based on extremely rigorous measurements of 477 different morphological characteristics of 81 individual sauropod specimens. This study was so in-depth, it made all the other paleontologists go, whoa, and basically established a new standard of sauropod taxonomy. And guess what? Brontosaurus was back! Based on the study's criteria, notably difference around the shoulders and neck, among other things, it was determined that Apatosaurus excelsus was distinct enough from the other species of Apatosaurus that it belonged in its own separate genus, and since it had already been described 136 years prior, the genus Brontosaurus was restored. In addition, since so many sauropods were examined in the study, two other species were reclassified within the genus when it all shook out, Brontosaurus parvus, formerly Elosaurus parvus, and Brontosaurus yanapin, formerly Eobrontosaurus yanapin. Of course, there are always critics. Some paleontologists point out that the criteria chosen for the study are arbitrary and that specific differences aren't standardized. It could be argued that they were chosen based on a bias toward giving Brontosaurus its own genus status. The mass media reaction to this study has been described as superficial and premature. For reasons like these, some paleontologists continue to consider Brontosaurus a synonym of Apatosaurus. Brontosaurus has come a long way since its discovery in the 1800s. Through the work of Marsh, Riggs, Chop, and countless other paleontologists, and over a century of controversy and scientific debate, it's been quite a journey. But, at least for now, as of 2015, Brontosaurus officially remains in the scientific literature. So, next time you're talking about how your favorite dinosaur is Brontosaurus and some dino nerd tells you there's no such thing, you can be an even bigger dino nerd and tell them that Brontosaurus is back. At least according to most dino nerds. Like, the nerdiest ones. Mostly. Hey everyone, I'm glad you're enjoying these unexpected dino lessons. If you're as passionate about dinosaurs as I am, consider checking out my Patreon at patreon.com slash unexpected dino lesson. When you join, you'll be able to request your favorite dinosaur to be featured, and it'll be up on social media within a few days. You'll also get exclusive previews of upcoming content, dinosaurs, and art not yet posted anywhere else on the internet. I really appreciate the support, and again, that's patreon.com slash unexpected dino lesson.